We ended last time with, for a governing system to make sense and work, the people, including the people in government, need to believe in something. Blind faith. Although people have to believe in something for government to work, it does not have to be a belief in God, which has been eroded, or in science, which we've been talking about. There are other things for a people to believe in. In communist countries, we see belief in the leader, as in North Korea, where they worship their leader, as they also did in pre-World War II Japan. Or we might see belief in or faith in the party, like we saw in the Soviet Union, which was also seen in a kind of worship of Joseph Stalin. There is an alternate history Netflix series entitled 1983, premised upon a traumatic political event in 1983 that was a catalyst for people to put their faith in the party. In the story, there is this young girl who grew up within that framework, where her father was a leader in the party, in this alternate Poland. She and her boyfriend happen upon this Christian family because the axle on their car broke, and they talk about the disaster in 1983. The matriarch of the family spoke about how God got them through it and the hope they had in the midst of despair and how God must have allowed it to happen for a reason. And it was this hope that they found in God that united them and pulled them through the aftermath of the 1983 incident. And this young girl looks at the older woman and says, you mean the party, right? The party united us and the party got us through it and the party gave us hope, right? Watching that scene and the rest of the series relays the understanding that it could be belief in the party that becomes the belief system that makes governance possible. When someone believes so strongly in the party, that person becomes an ideologue, an acolyte in party worship. And in secular societies where they seek to separate faith from governance, it just means that the ruling class needs to secure a strong belief in something other than God in order to govern. It could be science, and many, many Americans fell into that belief system, but it could also be a political party or a person or a particular leader. And many Americans fell into that belief system too. I hear people talk about the Trump cult or Trump as a cult leader or the MAGA cult, but I also hear people talk about the Ligbit cult, the LGBTQ cult. I would say cults have their own place though. They, cults take a truth and they twist it. And so many of these religions are probably more like cults, but the fact remains they are claiming a belief in something without evidence. I do find it interesting how much faith Americans put in their favored political party or candidate. Vote blue no matter who, there's gonna be a red wave this year. Trump will come in and fix everything. And I've heard things like, Biden is a good man. Really, where's the evidence for that? But no matter which political party or candidate a person supports, it appears the average person will believe everything good that is said about their candidate, their person, and they'll believe nothing bad that is said about that candidate or that person, while at the same time, that person will believe nothing good about the opposition candidate or the opposition uh, party and everything bad about the opposition candidate, the other candidate. This takes a lot of faith, a lot of faith. Just remember, faith is only as strong as the item into which it is placed. You can believe with your whole heart that the chair you are about to sit in will support you. But if it doesn't and you end up on the floor, what good was that faith you had in the chair? What baffles me is that when it comes to political party and candidates and officials, it doesn't matter how often an American ends up on the floor. They keep believing in the same broken chair. What's the definition of insanity again? Anyway, and while the unraveling has revealed a decline in traditional Judeo-Christian religious values and faith in an invisible God is being mocked, 
blind faith in a leader, in a party, in our institutions like academia, the medical profession, research institutes, and government agencies and experts has more than filled the void. It is interesting to note that this belief in the party is juxtaposed very early on in the first episode of 1983 with belief in the law. And we find ourselves back again asking, what law? And the answer should again be natural law. Shifting sands. The foundation upon which something is built matters. No matter how well designed the pillars, if the ground the structure is built upon shifts, it increases the likelihood that the pillars will crack, lose their fittings, or even come crumbling down. Especially should the ground endure several small earthquakes or one large one. And there have been some significant societal impacts, not just of late, but throughout the short history of this country. I am really hoping my analogies make sense without me having to spell it out to the reader, but I am also very interested in what the reader or listener thinks. What do you think have been some of the earthquakes or significant societal impacts that have caused the foundation of this country to shift? The foundation upon which something is built matters. No matter how well designed the pillars, if the ground the structure is built upon shifts, it increases the likelihood that the pillars will crack, lose their fittings, or even come crumbling down. And if the loom upon which the fabric of this culture was woven is destroyed, recreating the tapestry of American society is impossible until the loom is repaired or rebuilt. Not to mention if the threads, I mean, what do you think the threads represent? If the threads out of which the fabric needs to be weaved are tangled, broken, or burned, the picture woven out of them may be difficult to discern and most definitely will not resemble the one destroyed. That is the new normal we find ourselves living in. There is no going back. Indeed, as the prevailing narrative is being framed by political ideologues in order to convince others to become political ideologues, the polarization has become too acute and the division too deep for a half-hearted attempt at a return to normal to achieve any success. Throwing out natural law, throwing out the Constitution, throwing out fundamental rights, throwing out the Bible, throwing out civil society organizations as sources of legal, political, and moral authority results in a new reality. One in which I still have this sense I am living in the twilight zone. Reality slips sideways and the new normal in which we are expected to live is framed around the filling of that newly opened space in the hearts and minds of Americans who now rely on science and the sovereign government to define all morals and values, answer all questions, and solve all problems. Institutions are the new cathedrals. Experts are the new preachers. Ideologues are the new evangelists. The media serves as scripture and the members of the media serve as its priests. And government is the new God. The analogy is a good one. Some experts have reached a pinnacle of celebrity, like some great preachers, and the experts did not even have to be charismatic to achieve such status. Ideologues are fervently and unapologetically spreading their message. Undeterred and unrelenting, they march against the disbelievers, determined to convince them of their erroneous ways and to turn to the only thing that can save them. The media, but only one's preferred translation, serves as the gospel, and the talking heads tell you what the truth means, how it should be interpreted, how it applies to you, and what actions you should take. They direct our worship toward the sovereign and dole out penance for society's sins. And yes, when one gets caught betraying or abusing his or her congregants, they might be forced to move parishes or media outlets. However, whereas people lash out at God for the failures of their priests and preachers and may actually stop believing in God or get angry at the Almighty when things go wrong, and when one's holy scriptures appear inconsistent or impossible to reconcile, People tend to discount the entire text and turn against their religion. And when their priests betray them or doctrines offend them, people turn against their religious institutions. Yet such reactions are not happening in this new reality. Even though the government overpromises 
and under delivers, never apologizes nor admits to faults or failures, fails to solve our problems and instead creates new ones, lies to us, defrauds the taxpayers and demonizes those it's trying to convert, they do not lose followers, but somehow the faithfulness of its adherence strengthens. Everything that should have served to turn the American people against this new religion and its revered God has instead served to consolidate power unto it. And the authority voluntarily handed over to those in government increases in the same proportion as the magnitude of its failures. It astounds me how many people who, after failures, betrayal, and dishonesty from the scientific community, the media, the experts, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical system, and government officials still see all these people and institutions as reliable.